I love Christmas, and I love it particularly in this very strange year that we've had. And I think I love it all the more because of the restrictions we've had this year. I love the festive feel of Christmas. I love the food. I love the decorations. I love the lights. I love the movies. And I love the nativity plays. Uh, This week, we were asked to film our two-year-old son, Barney, for a video nativity in which he had to play a shepherd. And for that, uh, we basically floated the idea casually with him about him being a shepherd and dressing up, and he said he didn't think that was a good idea. So we then had to try and persuade him. So we said, well, it's very easy, Barney, and it'll be really fun as well, because you'll just basically wear a tea towel on your head, and you'll wear a pillowcase over your clothes, and, and a belt, and then you'll, you'll hold your uh, little lamb in your hand, and you'll point up uh, to the angel. It'll be great, won't it? And he cried, and he said he didn't want to be part of it. And then Jill said, well, I've got a great idea. Why don't you, pointing to me, Daddy is going to dress up as a shepherd as well. He's going to put his dressing gown on and go out in the garden, and he will really get into the part, and then you'll get into it too, won't you, Barney? Uh, This was take 15, I think, of us trying to get some sort of excitement out of Barney. (laughs) I don't know whether you feel more like me or Barney about Christmas. It's a strange kind of time of year in some ways. And it's sometimes often hard to remember why we're doing all of this stuff. I I heard of a teacher who was trying to persuade uh, uh, her her kids to do um, a nativity. And she started by asking them some questions. The first question she said is, now, what did the shepherds find when they arrived at the stable? Does anyone know? A little girl put her hand up, and uh, the teacher said, yes. And the girl said, an egg. The teacher said, "Um," she looked a bit puzzled, but the girl insisted. She said, you know, the egg that the baby came out of. She wondered whether she should teach biology rather than theology to explain what actually happened. The girl was very insistent. She said, no, 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 you said, you said that Mary laid him in a manger. Teacher thought she'd move on. So she said, well, well, does anyone know what the name of the baby was? Another hand shot up, a little boy this time. He said, yes, I know, Wayne. Teacher said, where on earth did you get that idea from? He said, well, we sing it the whole time, a Wayne in a manger. Now, I don't know whether you're as confused as those children about Christmas, but it's very easy to lose sight of the main point of Christmas. But I think it's summed up best, not in that particular carol, A Wayne in a Manger, but in one other carol, which has the chorus, tidings of comfort and joy. In other words, good news of comfort and joy. And if there's any year that we needed to hear that, it's this one. Good news of comfort and joy. And joy. Comfort is the easing or the alleviation of grief or distress. And every one of us this year will have been affected in some way. Maybe you're grieving the loss of a loved one, or the loss of a job, or the loss of a relationship. Maybe you've experienced distress of physical illness or or mental illness or financial worries or maybe the sadness of separation from those that you love. Either way, each of us have experienced grief and therefore each of us is looking for comfort. The statistics bear that out, in fact. Comfort food November was the biggest ever month of UK grocery sales. We've spent 11 billion pounds last month. Uh, The top Google searches for recipes this year include the recipe for bread, the recipe for KFC, and the recipe for IKEA meatballs. Uh, Comfort films. We've never binged on more TV than we have done this year, whether it's Tiger King or Normal People or The Crown. And interestingly, footwear. 
Shoe Zone slipper sales are up 285%. Now, we all know that food and films and footwear don't really comfort us. The only thing that really comforts us is a connection with another human being, with closeness with those that we love. That's what brings real comfort. And that's what's made this year all the harder. I remember after the first lockdown, I went to see my mum, who's over 70 and shielding for that reason. And I gave her a big hug when I saw her. And then I, I sort of let go, but she wouldn't let go. And she said, can we just hold this a little bit longer? I haven't had any human contact in three months. The power of contact the power of closeness to bring comfort. I don't know if you've seen the BBC uh, clip. More than a million people have watched uh, this clip of two vicars in Burnley distributing food to those who were in need. And they are, they're crying. And uh, when I watched it, it brought uh, tears to my eyes as well. It, the, the heartbreak of the need and yet the heart warmth of those reaching out to be close. I've spent time with people this year who've lost people very close to them. And you realize that as people are grieving, the best thing you can do is not say anything. Just shut up and show up. Be there. Presence is powerful. Closeness brings comfort. And that brings us on to the carol that I mentioned at the beginning. Tidings of comfort. The writer of the carol begins the carol by saying, let nothing dismay you. Remember Christ, our Savior, was born on Christmas Day. Well, you might be thinking, well, what possible difference could the birth of a baby 2,000 years ago, 2,000 miles away, have to bring comfort to us today? What difference could it make? And for that matter, why on earth is the whole of human history divided by the birth of a baby, A.D. and B.C.? Well, the key answer to this question is the identity of that baby. Who is Jesus? Perhaps the most important question you'll ever answer. The claim of the New Testament is that Jesus was God in human form. And there's no time to explore all the evidence for why that might be true. But one interesting thing in the Christmas story is his fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. You know, in his life and death, Jesus fulfilled over 300 Old Testament prophecies. Now, you could argue that he was a very good con artist, that he decided that he was going to fulfill all the Old Testament prophecies. It's a bit like a bucket list. He went through hitting each one of them as he went through his life. But the problem with that argument is that many of those prophecies were about events over which he had no control, such as the precise manner of his death and the exact location of his birth. In Bethlehem. It's no good looking through your Old Testament trying to hit this and you discover that you were born in Bethlehem. It's too late. And Jesus fulfilled those prophecies. One of the prophecies we heard read earlier by Al from Isaiah chapter 9, where Jesus is described in these wonderful terms. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Another name that we heard of Jesus was in one of the carols we heard earlier, Emmanuel, which means God with us. And this is the message of Christmas, that if there is a God who made this whole universe, billions of galaxies, he's not an absentee landlord He's not a distant superpower. He's not a figment of our corporate imagination. He came as a person, as a baby, in weakness, born into poverty, into the muck and mess of our daily lives. And if closeness brings comfort, then Christmas brings the greatest comfort of all. God knows how you feel. He understands 
you. And he is close to you. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and it has felt like that for many people this year, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God is with you. Your rod and they staff, your staff, they comfort me. We've been running a number of courses uh, during the lockdown uh, here at St. Nick's. Uh, something called Begin Well, which is an antenatal class for people who can't afford it. It's free. Uh, also, uh, another course called Rework, which we've been running to help those who've been impacted by COVID and lost their, uh, their jobs and trying to get them back into work. And another course we run is, is called Alpha, which we've been doing online. And Alpha is really an opportunity to explore the big questions, the evidence for Jesus. Uh, what's my purpose in life? Those kind of questions. And uh, we weren't sure how it was going to work online. I wasn't, uh, normally, we have the courses in person. And, um, but I was amazed, actually, to be part of a group which almost immediately bonded. None of us knew each other. And on Zoom, we began to get to know each other. And it was the highlight of my week during lockdown to meet these people and discuss, many of whom never discussed these things before, many not from a Christian background. And we had some feedback from uh, the course. Some people sort of give us a little feedback. And one person, one guest on Alpha Online, uh, her name's Freya, she gave me permission to, to share this. She said this, I've met some lovely people and it's provided me with comfort through the pandemic and given me the opportunity to talk openly and freely about faith. God is with us to bring comfort. He's with you. But comfort, even though it's important, is not enough. It's not the only thing that we need. You know, comfort might ease our pain, might dull the ache of what we feel. But what we long for is someone to say, things are going to change. This is not the end. It's not always going to be like this. I remember um, two weeks ago, I was in the kitchen uh, in the morning having my breakfast. And on the radio came uh, uh, an interview with a virologist. And... This virologist was asked about the emergence of a vaccine. People have started talking about it. And the interviewer said, do you think it's possible that we could say that by the spring, life in this country might have returned to something approaching normal? And the virologist hesitated for a while. Most people wouldn't sort of say that was the case. He thought for a while and said, yes, I think that is a high probability. And I felt this amazing sense of hope for the first time in many, many weeks and months that things might change. I don't know if you had that feeling as well. And I, I, it's a, change is so important. Uh, and uh, C.S. Lewis, the author of the Narnia stories, uh, you may have come across him, an uh, Oxford academic, atheist, turned believer, uh, wrote about both the pain of loss, he lost someone very close to him, and the joy that he found in his faith in Jesus Christ. And then he said this, he said, if you look for truth, you may find comfort. If you look for comfort only, where you, you will not get either comfort or truth only soft soap and wishful thinking. In other words, what is true is infinitely important. And the claim of the Christian faith is that the baby didn't stay a baby, but he grew up, he lived, and he died on a cross. That Jesus died on a cross for you and for me to bring us close again to God, to restore that relationship. And for me, that sums up, is summed up in the word joy. Joy is one of those words that if you say the word joy, you almost can't help smiling. Joy. It's something much more profound than just pleasure. You know, pleasure comes and goes, doesn't it? One of my um, lockdown uh, highlights was watching actually a film called The Social Dilemma. I don't know if you've seen it on Netflix. And uh, I remember watching it and thinking, and then checking my phone quite often to see what was going on on social media, and after a while thinking I should put that down. But it, the idea that billions of dollars are spent making us addicted to the dopamine hits we get from social media frightened me. 
So much so that I gave up social media for two days. <laughs> Didn't want to miss out too much. But it's interesting. We surround ourselves with pleasure, but it doesn't satisfy. It's momentary and passing and addictive. Isn't it that we're longing for something deeper than that? Joy. Joy. The joy of peace in our hearts. Peace with one another. Peace with God. And this is what the angels say in Luke chapter 2. They say, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. What are the angels talking about? Well, on the surface, you'd say, well, this is not a joyful moment. I mean, Mary is a single uh, person, not married, in that culture, told that she's going to have a baby. Can you imagine the conversation with Joseph? I, I, I'm, I, I'm pregnant. Oh, okay. Uh, and also, it's not yours. Oh, okay. Imagine how Joseph reacts to that. How's he going to get out of this situation? This doesn't sound like joy. This sounds like a nightmare. And the shepherds, you know, they're busy minding their own business, making ends meet, and they're told to go to Bethlehem, to a random town. And yet so compelling is the angel's message that they go. And the message continues. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born. Remember Christ our saviour to save us from Satan's power. These are the words of that carol. Jesus' name actually means saviour. So if our greatest lack of, our greatest problem had been our lack of money, God would have sent a banker or a financier. If our greatest need had been pleasure, he would have sent an entertainer. But actually our greatest need was for forgiveness. And so he sent a saviour. The baby grew up lived and died on a cross for you to reconnect us to the reason for our existence. God made you, knows you, loves you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. This surely is good news of great joy. The joy of forgiveness, knowing that everything in the past has been forgiven. The joy of security, that knowing that your identity is not tied up in your social media likes or your popularity or your work or your produce, but actually by being a child of God, loved and precious to him. The joy of purpose, knowing that your life has a meaning. You know, you're not here by accident. God loves you. He has a plan for you. The joy of justice, knowing that particularly in this year of black lives matter, knowing that justice will be done, that it will happen. The joy of hope, that death has been conquered, all creation will one day be renewed, and that we will inherit eternal life. This is good news of great joy. I mentioned um, Alpha, one of the other uh, responses we had from someone in uh, lockdown. Uh, a guy called Sean, who again has given me um, permission to tell you this. He said he grew up as an atheist, atheist family. And this is what he said. He said, this has been literally life-changing. I've given my life to God in a way that as a cynic, I never thought was possible. I've prayed regularly. I've experienced the Holy Spirit. And I've met a group of people who have helped me overcome the huge barriers that I had in my way. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. You know, the good news, the best news, is that all people includes you. This is good news for you and for me. And all we need to do is ask like a gift and receive it. And I don't know where you're at tonight. Maybe you don't believe any of this stuff. Maybe you think it's all load of rubbish, that's fine. But maybe you're thinking, well, it might be true. I'm not sure. Never really thought about it. I'd love to encourage you to give Alpha a shot in the new year. It's a great place to sort of think a bit more about it. But maybe you're here tonight and thinking, you know what? I'd love to know Jesus like that for myself, to know the comfort and joy that he brings. Well, you don't have to wait 
until January. You don't have to wait until the new year. Jesus died and he rose again. And he's here with us now. And you can talk to him if you'd like to. So what I'd love to do is to close with a prayer. Shall we pray together? Whether you're at home watching this or on catch up or if you're here in the building, I'd love to pray. And there may, again, there may just be one person, but you're thinking, I'd love to know Jesus tonight. Well, you can talk to him right now. As I said, picture him in front of you, Jesus standing in front of you. And you can talk to him now and you can echo these words. I'm gonna pray a prayer and you can echo these, these words in your heart and say them to him. Dear Lord Jesus, I don't think I know you, but I would like to. I would like to know the comfort and joy that you bring. And so tonight, I I want to choose to turn away from everything I've done wrong in the past and turn towards you. Please forgive me. Please fill me with the comfort of your presence and the joy of knowing you. Thank you, Lord, that you will never leave me. You will never let me down. In Jesus' name, amen.